<laughs> Today we're looking at this HMF SL300. And this quadcopter is a little unique than every other quadcopter I have. This one has the slanting motors. So let's go ahead and open this up and we'll take a look at it. It comes with this little top that you uh, cut out when you're finished. It looks like it was just a vacuum form, but you're supposed to cut it out and then it, I think a rubber bands or something onto your quad. Comes with some landing gear. And here is the main plate where the magic happens. <laughs> it has these two servos here and they, when you hook these arms up to it, it turns the uh, little pieces like this back and forth and that's what actually tilts the motors. And so instead of the quadcopter turning like this and going, the motors tilt and that allows it to go forward. But this is the main plate. It has a power distribution board built into it and it has you know these armholes back here and the screws are already in up here so that's kind of nice they didn't get lost uh oh this is where the uh little top plate must have gone is onto these little nubs here so let's see also comes with the top plate and it has the uh, little uh, anti-vibration things in here already installed uh comes with the uh motor mounts that go on the ends of the arms and a battery strap and also comes with the four carbon fiber arms and the motors will mount onto the mounts and they'll mount onto this. Oh, one more thing. It also includes these instructions on how to put it together. And down here at the bottom, it shows how you are supposed to hook up the servos to your uh, CC3D or something, your receiver. So anyway, we'll have to figure all this out <laughs> when I go to build this, but anyway, it gives you at least some ideas on how to get started with the uh, with setting it up and configuring the motors to actually tilt. So here I have the arms installed now, and they just slide into here, and then there's a little set screw right here that you put in there. You just tighten this down to hold the arm in. Now it would have been good if there would have been a second set of screws to go on this side, but there aren't. But they're just little M3 screws like this. You can. Take these out of other models you have or whatever, and you could put them in here if you wanted to, if you thought they were gonna to be too loose. Um, also, here I have the servos hooked up to each arm. And the way to do this, you have to center your servos, and then you install the arms and make sure that your uh, motor mounts are pointing pretty much up. And these motor mounts are installed with a lock nut on this side with a screw on this side that goes all the way through, and it just pinches on there and holds the arm in place. So on here I have this little servo tester and I have a five volt voltage reducer. And if I plug this in, hold on, let me make sure it's, it's on uh, neutral. So when I plug it in, let me turn these arms a little bit. And then when I, when I plug it in, they should center up, we'll see. Yep, so now they're centered up and I can flip this over to manual and then we should be able to see the arms move. And see there, they're laying them forward and backward. So the servos are working fine, and the uh, tester is working fine too, so that's good. Here, we'll take another look at this power distribution board on here. Now again, this up here where these little nubs are, this is the front, and there's a power connection right here that you can kind of see there. And that's the positive negative, and that's gonna give you full voltage off of whatever's being fed in from the battery. And the battery is going to plug in back here to these two little spots right there, and or, they're kind of right there beside the holes, right there and over there. And that's where the battery solder's on, and that provides power in through the power distribution board to these center um, power distribution holes here. And these are all gonna have to power your ESCs, and there's eight of them here, eight connections, uh, four positives and four negatives, and those are to power your ESCs. So to power your flight board, you're actually gonna have to, gonna have, to have a separate BEC, kind of like this one here. It's just in this cable here, you can't really see it, but it's a five volt, uh, voltage reducer and that will have to power your um, flight board. Now if you don't have one of those you can also use the, the signal out from or the power out on your video transmitter and that can power your flight board as well. That's assuming that you don't need it to power your camera up here in the front and hopefully you have a camera with a wide voltage range and it can just power straight onto the battery and you just hook the video up to your video transmitter. But the uh, there aren't any other power um, 
power options on here. There aren't any extra uh, little solder pads for other positives or negatives to power anything else. So you kind of just get those, these six ones here in the center. And so your ESCs have to line up somehow inside here to uh, you know make a good spot. And it looks like there's not a lot of room because you got these two giant servos here. And I say giant, they're really only like nine gram servos it looks like. But you don't have a lot of room inside here for your ESCs. But you do have quite a, quite a bit of height, respectively speaking, for your uh, ESCs. You know, hopefully maybe stack them up, two over here and two of them back here. And that way they kind of equal out the weight of the servos. And also it leaves the center open so you can put your uh, flight board in here. And, you know, because you're very limited in space inside this frame. So here it is with the uh, landing gear on and the battery strap in place and the top plate on. Now you think this, this battery strap is gonna go on your ESCs. Well, hopefully you're running your wires from here back to here for this, these two ESCs and here back to here for the other two ESCs. So there won't be anything in the middle here for this uh, battery strap to mess up or pull on besides the frame itself. And so it would just hold the battery down here on the bottom. So up here on the top, like I was saying, I got the, uh, top cut but this is supposed to you're supposed to pop out these little holes here or I'm gonna use my uh, soldering iron and poke them out the neck slips on here and those should those little holes should slip on through these um, little posts there and back here in the back it has another set of holes back here that need to be poked out and then they will set on top of here and I believe you're supposed to use these little uh, space dampeners here that it comes with and put these on See if I can get them in real quick. There it goes. Put those little dampeners in there like that, and then the body would slip down over top of it. Now I don't really trust this to hold on very tight because they slip out pretty easily. So I don't know if I'd use the dampeners here, even though they would provi provide a quick, a quick connect and a quick disconnect. But I think I'd probably try to find some other way to get some screws in there, like these M3 screws or something to hold it down. And also on here, I did not cut out the front of this, but you're supposed to cut the front of this out based on how your um, cameras are mounted up here in the front. If you have your FPV camera sitting down here on this lower plate, because you can see here it kind of sticks out a little bit, so you have room for your FPV camera here. You can have your Mobius or your run cam up on top, and then you'd have to cut out the um, little hood here to, you know, so they could see out the front. But this is kind of what it looks like from the side profile when you have the uh, hood in place. One more thing before we get to the measuring, it came with some Velcro. So you can put some of this on your battery and then some of it on the underside right here. That way it'll help keep the battery from sliding forward or backward and the strap will actually hold it in place. Anyway, here's the ruler and I was gonna measure to see how long these were and my ruler looks like it's barely long enough. Let me center it over that one and it comes up to be about 20, 295 millimeters. So that's pretty good. I must have got those on pretty straight because that, they were supposed to be 295, so I guess that's good. Anyway, here's the uh, plates. We'll go ahead and measure these. This top plate, oops, turn on this way. The top plate comes out about 1.5, 1.6 millimeters. The bottom plate comes out about 1.5 millimeters as well. Now normally I'd say that's not real strong for a frame like this, but the nice thing is you have this landing gear here that helps pro provide a little bit of stability to it as well. So I don't know if it'd really be too bad. And these arms aren't too thick, you know, and so anyway, I don't know. We need to see how much it really weighs because that's what a big deciding factor is gonna be in how much damage is done when you crash. So this is the quadcopter entirely assembled with everything in place, including the servos. This comes out to be 237 grams. This is a very heavy frame. It has, I think a lot of the weight can be attributed to the uh, landing gear and to the servos because a lot of other uh, quads do not have those. Also, all this metal here and the bearings in place and the thing through the center to help um, to help give us a lot of strength for you know taking a beating and, and still work. But 237 grams, that's, that's pretty heavy for a frame. One more thing I meant to measure was the distance between these two plates because that's gonna be kind of important. 
uh, it's about 23 millimeters. So if you're planning on having a separate power distribution board other than using the one that's in here, you're at the play in pretty tight because you only got 23 millimeters of space. So if you stack up a power distribution board and a flight board, you're gonna have, you're probably gonna be soldering your uh, pins or your wires straight to your flight board. So just be aware of that. If you're not planning on using a power distribution board, but instead using the one that's built in, you should have plenty of room for a bent pin uh, flight board in this frame. So here's a six inch prop, and you can see even with the canopy in place, it clears it just fine. You could run five inch props on here, but uh, for this frame, as heavy as it is, you're probably better off running six inch props because five inch props won't give you quite as much thrust as six inch ones would. Burning the holes with the soldering iron was perfect. These things are real tight up here coming through, which is good. And I got these little rubber things through here. They're a real pain to get through this because my holes were so small. But when you pull it up, it should release off the bottom ones like that. Then you can use this, you know, to access whatever you have sitting inside here, your Mobius or whatever you have. And then putting them down through these holes is a lot easier than putting them up through the plastic holes in the uh, canopy. So there, I got them in there. I'm actually doing this on camera. Unbelievable. Okay, actually the other side went in by itself. Good, so that was easy. Uh, down here on the bottom, I got a 2100 3S battery sh uh, strapped on here just for looks. I got the piece of Velcro stuck to the frame underneath there. And when it lands, there's plenty of space underneath for it to not uh, actually land on the battery itself. Now, a big question I have about these kind of frames are, are they really faster than quadcopters that lean forward to go forward? I mean, these are gonna go, these motors are gonna tilt to make it go forward and that's where it'll get all of its thrust. Now, the cool thing is, if you watch some of the races, the uh, other quadcopters that, are, that don't have tilted motors, they gotta go up and then tilt and then go. And so they have about, about about maybe a one second delay to get going, unless of course the person's good and they take off and just go like that. <laughs> but no one at our races seems to do that very well. So these, I'm anxious to see how this does because it'll be sitting here and then it'll just immediately take off and go forward um, because of the tilting motors. So anyway, I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure how that's actually gonna work or how it's gonna compete with the uh, quad coppers with the stationary motors. But you know, maybe we'll see someday if I get this built. If you're interested in this, I'll have some links in the description. If you uh, just wanna tell me to build it, please don't because I have like three other projects that I'm working on trying to get built. This one hopefully will get built eventually because I'm really anxious to see how to program the CC3D to tilt these motors instead of tilting the whole frame. And I'm also anxious to see how it actually flies because it seems kind of weird when I've seen some of the first person view videos of other people flying it. It's just sitting here and all of a sudden, whoop, it goes forward. And it doesn't have that thing where the, the horizon takes over your whole screen and then it goes forward. It, they're really interesting videos to watch. Anyway, I think there's enough room back here. This is where you'd mount your battery, or, or sorry, no, back here's your mount battery. Mount your video transmitter back here up on top and you have these holes here, um, but problem is you don't really have a lot of room underneath there to actually use them without interfering with the uh, servo arm. So I'm not really sure that you can actually use those. You might have to uh, find some other way to mount them because I'm not really sure. But I guess if your zip ties were thin, you could put them in here. Or you could take this servo uh, arm here and lower it down to one of the lower pins on the uh, little uh, servo horn there if you wanted to. And you could do the same thing on the front as well. But I don't know if, I don't know how well that would work out or bad or good but i guess you could also mount your video transmitter up inside here and then have an extension wire come back and mount it up here somehow but again there's no good mounting hole for the uh antenna wire so for a video transmitter wire so maybe i'm not sure where you'd actually run it so this is the hmf sl 300 this came from GearBest. if you have any uh, interest in picking one of these up yourself i'll have links in the description if you have any questions about it feel free to leave them in the comments and i'll try to help you out as best i can and as always thanks for watching